Hello, it's me, Demon Julie. How are you, my little demons? I am here today to read you a scary story. Yes, and I'm going to read from one of my most favorite books. It is called Twisted by Daniel Wilcox. I highly recommend it. It is a collection of short stories, all filled with horrific things. And he is so talented because what he puts on the page is the true emotion behind what we are all terrified of. So the story that I have chosen to read is called Of Theme Parks and Dragons. Shall we get started? When I was five years old, my grandfather took me to my first theme park, a big neon sign arcing the entrance that read, Jimmy's World of Fun. The sounds of screaming kids, I'll be honest, standing there holding my grandfather's hands, it was one of the most terrifying feelings of my life. Ready to have some fun, kiddo? My grandfather leaning down to my level, causing every bone in his back to crack. The locket that my grandmother once gave him around his neck. A golden sigil of a dragon on an oval of metal. I nodded. Even back then, I always knew when to lie. But the day wasn't half as bad as I had expected, of course. At five, I couldn't make my way onto the loopers or the super spinners, but I had a blast riding the log flumes, the teacups, and the go-karts. My grandfather sat beside me on every single ride, and it's only now that I look back several years after his death that I realize how hard that must have been for him. He had been 85 back then, had suffered from arthritis and died from a stroke not a year later. Every single bump, whirl and knock must have shot through his body like glass in a tumble dryer. All testament to just how much he loved his granddaughter, I guess. It's all because of my grandfather that I became such a theme park enthusiast. I'm 14 now, I'm practically a grown up. Compared to the other kids in school, I'm pretty fucking mature. They mock and laugh at me for my adrenaline junkie ways, but I hardly give a shit. To honor grandfather's memory, my mother organizes trips for me to visit theme parks as often as possible. She's now so far down the rabbit hole of her own illness that she can hardly leave the house anymore. So she organizes chaperones to and from the door like they're going out of business. At one point in my life, I wondered if she was actually just trying to get rid of me as often as possible, or if it was genuinely all for me. I chose to believe the latter. It's much softer on my psyche that way. Today's chaperone rings the doorbell and I sprint from my room to the door. I shout a quick bye to mom, who may have grunted something in return, and dash down the path to his car. I pause before opening the car door, surprised by what is standing there. Ah, you're right, Miss Abigail, the chaperone says in a voice I find oddly familiar. This is for me, I say, marveling at the gleaming black polish of the limousine. The windows are tinted, the silver of its detailing gleaming so brightly in the sun that I can see my own reflection from miles away. Indeed, a gift your mother from your mother to honor your birthday. My birthday is over a month away. 
For the first time, I looked at the chaperone standing in a pristine black suit with driver's cap low over his eyes to cast a shadow across half his face. There's no smile at all, just a twinkle of the eye beneath the cap. He is long, slender, old. I shudder, struggling to make sense of it all. My mother has minimal funds by any account. How can she afford this luxury? But, and I suppose that this is the most important question, where are we going? The chaperone ignores me and opens the door to the limo. My mouth drops open and I'm seduced by the blood red velvet that lines the walls, the TV screens that litter the inside, the spotless silver buckets filled with ice, Red Bulls and Cokes. My favorite song is playing over the radio and I giggle as I jump on in. The smile so wide on my face that after a few miles of the journey it begins to hurt. When I eventually feel the limo pull to a stop, I hop on out before Clark, yeah, I managed to get his name out of him on the ride over. To be honest, there wasn't much more I managed to glean from him. Can even touch the door. I run in whichever direction my instincts tell me to go and find myself at a large gated entrance to a theme park I've never heard of nor seen before. At first I'm frozen to the spot, confused. It doesn't look like it should be open. One of the gates is hanging off its hinges. The other is so rusty that the metal is turned the same color as some of the trees that are now twisting and winding between the bars. Is this place open? I mean, it doesn't really look open, Clark. I jump as I hear Clark's voice next to me. I had no idea he had even left the car yet. Yes, Miss Abigail, it most certainly is open. Your mother has arranged a special visit for you to show how much she loves you. The park is yours and yours only for the entire day. My eyes grow wide with excitement. I run ahead and see a solitary woman sat in the ticket booth, back hunched sunglasses covering her eyes. She waves me through without question as I sprint into the park, completely unaware of the broken neon sign that reads Jimmy's World of Fun. All right, that's where we stop for today. If you want to see what happens, you have to come back next time.